much for having me here. And thank you so much to the whole eyewear team for this beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautifully realized um, item. Um, it's a thrill to hold a copy of it in my hand. I only found out about the maps thing yesterday. <laughs> it was kind of a shock when a British friend said to me, you know, that's not, we don't use that word. Um, and uh, yeah, so I hope there will be more surprises as I do more readings. <laughs> Hopefully if I, if I use another word um, that's, that seems incredibly American and strange, please let me know after the reading and I, I won't read it again. <laughs> um, so this first poem is called The Tour Guide. I have traveled through Europe on my own many times, and I always end up in some, you know, tourist spot following a, a tour guide who's speaking in the language that I don't speak. Um, and I'm trying to glean the information that I can. And uh, that's where this poem comes from. The Tour Guide. I follow the German tour guide through the hulking old basilica. He told the group, or so I guessed, indicating high and low. This is where the wind begins. This is where the childhoods of a thousand martyrs live untouched. Wood grain in these pews still curls to likenesses of patron saints. Window holes are cut the breadth of human souls when loosed. Dark paint in the frescoes is crushed ants. White paint is light. Leaves and fauna long extinct are rendered in the porticos. See that goat with antlers, gone from life, but captured here. Hold your breath and it bows its head. Reach toward the ceiling and sigh and it sighs. Worth two times the value of the Bulgar Sea is that old bell. When younger priests would ring it, the nuns were warned to shield their hearts. He said far more, I can't recall, and when I tried to pay him, he spurned my coins, saying in German, what good is money, my child, to the wind? Hmm. This next poem is a marriage proposal. Part one is the proposal, and part two is the response. Marry me, one. He said, I've known women taught from childhood all the ways to love a man further than reason. So he grabs his head in passion, scared he'll spill his brains. Touched bodies stitched of plum skins. Held bodies shivered thin with fear and sickness all through sweaty nights. So near death they stink. You were not yet born when I learned for good what a girl could do and gently with flattened hands, looking me straight in the eye. I'm not here for friendship. I don't want a lover. Take me to your small house and hang me like a shelf beside your entryway. Water me and feed me as you see fit. Give me a place to do my work and I'll show you the finest work of my life. Wrap your legs around me when the day ends and snore. There where trash trucks shake the wooden shades with loud harmonica calls, with your long hands to shuffle my hair and finger my toes, I'll show the world what I can do. Two, she said, I'm a white Siberian iris just past seedling in a vacant lot. Nobody knows how I got here, how to tend me, how long I'll last. I'm vulnerable to winds, dropped temperatures, interruptions, men. To love me is to watch me from the window of the tenement across the way, to visit me on Sundays, to send your prayers. Some things are so strange to the world and to themselves, they're best left to the seasons, which will care for them in increments so small, they shuffle nothing, impact nothing as far as men can see. This is the last one. This is called Poem That Contains All Time. <laughs> a sheep encountered a fisherman in rags 
near the edge of the world. Why, inquired the sheep, even now do you cast your line? The day is all but over, and the fish have learned to outsmart you. The fisherman spoke with a crack in his affable voice. Soft thing, he said. You're a place to rest one's ear after months of crunching leaves with muddy boots. You're what will turn a vicious day to dream, what launches us to buckshot, what ties night to our eyes. You're the door in the wall. You're the pack, a bag of cotton balls, an acre of clasped hands, but also you're a single thread which, pried from its grid, with little force unwinds the sheet we've knitted to a pile. Your grouped brain is the one that asks this question. The other brain, the stalk of wheat just dug up from the cooling field, already knows. Even when the stream is free of beasts, when yellowed grass appears in clumps so thick the water can't loop through and fretting dries. The fisherman carries his tackle box to the dust bowl where the river ends, casts his line, unwraps his lunch, and sits. An eon is a lot of time to wait for a change in weather, but forever is a longer time, and a single day with an unstrung pole to a man as old as I am is a broken watch a swath of cactus needles, all time. Thank you.